Hello and welcome everyone to this Fujitsu Activate Now 2021 deep dive session. My name is Zavisha and I'm a technical architect at Fujitsu Technology Solutions. During this session, we will be addressing the current challenges that the logistics industry is facing. We will focus mainly on sustainability and resiliency aspects of the logistics business. Together with our key partners, DHL and Autofleet, we will discuss the solutions to the logistics crisis and the future of logistics to accelerate our vision of green digital transformation. First, I would like to ask my colleague Matthias from DHL to share his overview of the challenges related to sustainability and resilience in logistics that DHL is facing and how DHL is using digital technologies to cope with those challenges. Thank you, Savisa, for the introduction and thank you for having me. My name is Matthias Heutger and I'm the Global Head of Innovation and Commercial Development here at DHL. I'm very happy to speak to you about a topic that has become a key part of the agenda for most companies across all industries around the world. In the next five minutes, I'd like to share how DPDHL is approaching ESG and how digitalization can help us to accelerate the environmental and sustainability part of it. I will also elaborate on how a collaborative approach can turn this into a worthwhile opportunity for everyone. It is a fact that the world we live in today is warmer than ever before. July 2021 was the hottest month on record and temperatures across 80% of the Earth's surface have risen in the last 30 years. The logistics industry has a very important mission of ensuring that essential goods are moving from point A to point B. This became even more apparent during the pandemic with e-commerce volume surging and new challenges put in front of us. As of today, for example, we had to deliver more than 1 billion vaccines to the world. There often is talk that we need to balance profitability and ecology. I believe that is not the correct question. It is not an either or or a balance to keep. For me, a sustainable agenda is a license to operate in the future, and it will be critical and enable us to maintain and drive profitability in the long run. Even throughout the pandemic, the importance of sustainability prevailed and even increased. There is an ever greater consumer awareness and demand for sustainable business practices, and in the boardrooms, sustainability is fast becoming the strategic imperative. Environmental and social governance, ESG, at DPDHL is not new. Our sustainability efforts go back over a decade to the year 2008, when we were the first global logistics company to set a quantifiable climate protection target. Along the way, we have integrated sustainability formally into our strategy, pioneered electric delivery vehicles, and achieved our carbon efficiency targets ahead of plan. This year, DPDHL has announced its sustainability roadmap, committing to a science-based reduction target underpinned with clear measures. Obviously, as a logistics company, a large component of our roadmap focuses on clean operations. And we will invest 7 billion euros in clean operations initiatives to reduce our emissions by 2030. We will transform our portfolio of products and, and our business model to integrate more sustainable practices. Some of the ways we will do this include decarbonizing our services through the adoption of sustainable fuels and low carbon technologies. Green optimization, which includes efficiency increasing solutions such as energy saving lightning in warehouses and route optimization. Electrifying our fleet especially for last mile deliveries. And also circular economy solutions where we are looking into su sustainable packaging and waste management solutions. Underlying our clean operations agenda is a strong focus on transparency and carbon reporting. Higher levels of visibility together with accurate data collection empowers better decision making. And this is where, where we as a community of digitalization experts and innovators can play the biggest role. At DHL, we believe in a collaborative and customer-centric innovation approach. That's why we established our four innovation centers around the world, 
with teams spearheading the future of logistics jointly with our operations colleagues, customers and partners. As a result, we have already seen clear and practical benefits of our digi digitalization efforts to the business with implementation of technologies such as data analytics, digital twins and AI, also in the area of sustainability. Take green optimization as an example. A digital twin could be used to model a supply chain with high quality data collected from IoT centers and analytics deployed across the operations. With the help of AI, managers would immediately be able to simulate changes and optimize operations for carbon reduction and energy efficiencies, while avoiding costly trials and long feasibility studies and more importantly, not compromising on services levels and profitability. But DHL remains a logistics company. As mentioned before, we approach innovation collaboratively and we will need technology partners like Fujitsu to build the technology and help us on our journey. And I think Savisa will be giving us more details on how Fujitsu approaches the green optimization topic and I'm looking forward to learn more about it. Sustainability is becoming increasingly important and will become the license to operate in the future. But it will also be a collaborative effort where we as will need operators like us working together with technology partners like Fujitsu to innovate and develop new and sustainable business models that are effective and profitable. Thank you, and now back to you, Savisa. Thank you, Matthias. For the next few minutes, I would like to share how Fujitsu can contribute to solving the challenges in the logistics like the ones that DHL is currently facing. Our purpose is to make the world more sustainable by building trust in society through innovation. As Matthias mentioned, logistics industry is facing challenges in terms of sustainability and resilience. We expect that digital technologies will streamline operations in logistics, realizing green digital transformation, which means reduction of the carbon footprint and last one mile delivery digital transformation that brings safety, security and comfort into transportation. Fujitsu is developing technologies such as mobility digital twin to collect data from connected vehicles, road infrastructure and warehouses at a massive scale. That data we gather is processed in real time and analyzed to deliver insights and added value to our products and services in the mobility ecosystem. By connecting the real world with advanced software algorithms, Fujitsu Digital Twin Platform enables visualization, prediction, and optimization in the entire supply chain. In order to protect the data and prevent cybersecurity threats in the connected vehicle space, Fujitsu has developed a vehicle security operation center Using specialized and sophisticated software, our security team is able to swiftly detect and respond to incidents on servers, network infrastructure, as well as vehicles. Dynamic data processing capability would be essential to improve resilience in logistics. That means the ability to predict incidents such as extreme weather conditions that cause delay in delivery. That gives us the possibility to act proactively and mitigate the negative effects by offering optimal transportation modes and alternative routes with comparable metrics such as delivery cost, punctuality in delivery time, and estimation of the CO2 emission. Digital Twin increases efficiency in logistics while eliminating downtime. Dynamic routing and dispatching capabilities that handle unexpected events such as traffic jams and ever-changing delivery demand are crucial for resilient and sustainable transportation. To achieve this goal, we partner up with Autofleet. This partnership complements Fujitsu's capabilities by providing dynamic dispatching and dynamic routing technologies, as well as an advanced simulation engine that can optimize logistics operations and help reduce the carbon footprint. Kobe, the CEO of Autofleet, will introduce these solutions in more detail. But before we jump into Kobe's talk, I have one more very exciting news to share with the audience. Fujitsu and Autofleet have been working for over a year now. And just yesterday, on the 28th of October, Fujitsu announced to have made an investment in Autofleet and signed a partnership agreement. Kobe, 
please give us some more details about out of lead technology and case studies of the work that you have done in the past. Thank you very much, uh, Zawisha. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is uh, Kobe Eisenberg. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Autofleet. In the next five minutes, I'll give you a quick overview of what we do at Autofleet. So everything that we do and focus on at Autofleet is focused on asset heavy fleets. So our customers range from delivering logistics companies to rental car companies, car sharing, taxi operators, any fleet that actually owns their assets. And the reason is, is that we believe that assets, asset heavy fleets today, and even more so in the future, will play a significant role in the value chain of mobility. What we do for these fleets is three core solutions. The first is what we call vehicle as a service, which is about automating and optimizing the internal operations of the fleet. So use cases like rebalancing of vehicles through demand prediction, optimized charging of electric vehicles, servicing, cleaning, really the end-to-end -end internal operations of the fleet with the end goal of reducing fleet downtime and maximizing utilization and revenues. The second solution is what we call ride as a service. And this is a turnkey solution to launch and optimize ride related services, both in delivery and logistics, as well as passenger related services. And the use cases here range quite a bit, anything from delivering logistics to traditional taxis, all the way to ride sharing and even autonomous shuttles. And finally, the third solution is what we call the simulator, which is really a planning tool that enables the fleet to answer different kinds of business questions like what should be the fleet size? Where should we locate the charging stations? What types of chargers? What should be the driver shifts? These types of, of tests and decisions are very costly and take a long time to test in real life, where with the simulator, we can simulate them within a few days and provide very actionable insights. All of those, all of those three solutions are based on one single platform that's based on AI in order with a whole set of capabilities, including the ability to predict future demand, dynamic pricing, optimized placement of vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. Here is an example. This is a screenshot of the auto fleet control center. This is basically where the fleet operator will track and manage the fleet in real time, receive real time alerts, see historical reporting, and so on. Everything that the fleet operator needs to manage the fleet. You could see here the hexagons, for example, that represent the predicted demand at a very high level of accuracy in very um, a high level of granularity. You can track the core KPIs and really track the specific routes of the vehicles using live traffic conditions uh, in real time. Let me give you one example of how optimized dispatching works. Let's say there is a package to be picked up from this location and there's two vehicles in the fleet, one that's three miles away and one that's a little bit further away, five miles. But the vehicle that's further away has a constraint. It's running out of battery and needs to charge. And there is also a charging station near the destination of where the package needs to be dropped off. Now let's run through two scenarios. Let's say you choose the vehicle that's closest to the pickle, to the pickup location. The amount of unpaid miles in this case are three unpaid miles to get to the pickup location, plus the second vehicle anyway needs to charge. So he's traveling another 10 miles. So a total of 13 unpaid miles. But if you choose the vehicle that's a little bit further away, there's now only five unpaid miles because the trip to the charging station is essentially paid for. So just in this very simple example, we've been able to cut the amount of unpaid miles from 13 to five, almost by a factor of three, while in reality, we're talking about tens of rides a minute with multiple constraints. And that makes a big difference on the fleet's efficiency and the customer experience. One final note, uh, one trend that we're seeing in the, in the industry overall is fleet electrification. We see the EVs being um, uh, adopted by fleets even much faster than they're being adopted by the private sector. And this is because a, an electric vehicle is the most suited for a high utilization use case. The higher the utiliz utilization, the lower the total cost of ownership of an electric vehicle compared to that of a traditional combustion engine vehicle. And so we spend today a lot of time and our platform is being used in order to plan the deployment of electric vehicles, understanding what's the best location to place the charging stations, what are the best vehicles and ranges of vehicles for a specific fleet use case, and so on and so forth, everything around that planning use case, as well as in actual production, in real time when the vehicles are deployed, the electric vehicles, making decisions about when is the best time to charge the vehicle and where to do it, 
based on the utilization of the fleet, the utilization of the charging infrastructure, time of use rates, and so on and so forth. Finally, uh, AutoFleet today is deployed in over 12 countries. Uh, we are managing over 30,000 vehicles and have ingested over 70 million miles through our platform. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kobe. Together with partners, Fujitsu will commit to accelerating green digital transformation and last one mile delivery digital transformation to create environmentally friendly future of the trusted society. Thank you.